Hey everyone, I've seen a lot of questions about using the KO2 and the OPZ together, so I figured I would make a video about syncing them, and a few other videos in the future, but today is just about um, getting the clocks working together and making sure that uh, all the settings are correct there, and a bit of troubleshooting too. Quick note, I'm using ver firmware version 1.1, which may go out of date uh, pretty quickly. So let's talk about connecting MIDI, both through USB and through TRS. Um, Let's start off with USB, just because that doesn't actually require any modules or anything. You're going to want a USB-C to USB-C cable, or some sort of dock, or whatever. Um, Kingston Nucleum could work. There's a variety of ways you could connect these, but you're going to want to make sure that you have a cable that also transmits data, because if it only transfers power, then it can't transmit the MIDI, and um, you will not be able to sync the two devices. I'm going to put this into the USB... Um, out port here, or sorry, the USB port here and then the USB port on the OPZ. And as I plug this in, I'm going to watch this last LED on the sequencer because I want to see it flash when I plug it in. Okay, that confirms that the that it, the OPZ detected a new device. If that doesn't work, I would shut off the OPZ, disconnect the USB-C, turn it back on, and then reconnect it and maybe do that one more time if you need. But for the most part, that just doing that once has fixed it for me. So a couple things. You might notice that the KO2 is still receiving power through battery, but the OPZ believes that it is sending power out to another device. So I generally don't use this just because I get a little bit nervous about whether or not it's draining the battery quickly out of the OPZ. So I generally use the TRS MIDI instead of the USB MIDI, but this does work totally fine for everything in, um, in this video. Other downside is that you have to have them both sending MIDI to each other in this configuration, unless you're going to mess with the MIDI settings. And uh, I don't necessarily love that. Right now, because the KO2's MIDI capabilities are pretty limited, I like sending the clock from the KO2 um, back to the OPZ. So let's go ahead and, sh and talk about the TRS connection, and then I'll talk about the settings. So if you're trying to connect it through TRS, which is this little 3.5 millimeter ports up here, and on the both line module and OP lab module. And it just takes a, a plain old, I don't know, you can call it aux cable, stereo cable, whatever you want to call it, but it's three and a half millimeters and you want it to have these two bands on it. And that is just going to go, I'm going to show you first of all from the out of the KO2 to the in of the OPZ. And it was that simple. Um, quick note, if you're connecting the KO2 to something that isn't an OPZ, check to make sure that it is not type B MIDI, because there's TRS type B, um, which will not work with TRS type A, and both the OPZ and KO2 are TRS type A. So hopefully uh, that saves you a bit of trouble there. But So right now we still have these two connected, but the KO2 isn't sending a clock and the OPZ isn't listening for one. Let's first Turn on the clock on the KO2. I'm going to go to the system settings by hitting shift and then erase. Then I'll hit, pl hit plus to go ahead and uh, bring up the MIDI menu. You can see this little MIDI icon. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to hit enter here. It's saying clock. And it's got a little clock icon. Right now, no clock is happening. I'm going to go past in to out. So I hit plus twice, then I hit enter. Really quickly, you could just do 102 and enter, um, but that's just if you're a weirdo like me who wants to memorize all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and we've got a clock sending from here to the OPZ, but the OPZ has no, it's not accepting any MIDI. I thought, uh, just today I learned that if, I, if you send transport to the OPZ, even if it's got no MIDI in, no clock in or anything, it will start the OPZ. Um, this is a song in progress, by the way. So it started it, but it's not syncing it. It's not receiving an external clock. So let's go ahead and hold down metronome and screen and press four or this first C sharp because that is going to be uh, clock into the OPZ. I'll open up the metronome and the, this thing going along here, these four lights, um, that indicates that it's being synced externally. So at this point, it's receiving both a clock and um, transport from the KO2. So if I start this over, you'll notice that if I slow down the KO2 by holding down minus, OPZ also slows down. If I use the um, if I use the punch-in effect that completely stops it, it will also stop playback on the OPZ. 
I think that's kind of a neat feature. Um, I actually just a second ago learned it almost works better the other way around, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Okay, so now that we got them synced where the KO2 is controlling the OPZ, let's switch that around. So I'm going to plug this into the MIDI out from the OPZ and put it into the MIDI in in the KO2. I'm going to turn off that clock in. I'm going to go over to, the, to my KO2, go to the system settings, and I'm either going to be a total nerd like I am and enter in 102, or I'm going to bring up the system settings, hit plus, enter, enter again, and then just scroll over to, to um, uh, in. Oh, so I should have typed 101 instead of 102. Oof. Tells you what, where my head's at right now. So this is now receiving a clock. And if I pull up tempo, the MIDI icon isn't flashing and there's no EXT. That's because the OPZ isn't sending a clock yet. Go to hold down metronome and screen. So for for the clock in, you don't need to enable MIDI in, but for the clock out, you do need to enable MIDI out, which is three, or this A sharp right here. And this D sharp is going to enable clock out. And the second I hit this, you're gonna see this say EXT, and you're gonna see a little MIDI icon. Um, it's very fast, it responds very quickly. And so now, the KO2 is um, being sequenced by the OPZ. And on the KO2 itself, if I hit play right now, it would start back at bar eight, but thankfully on the OPZ, if I press play while this is being externally synced, it will just restart this pattern, which is kind of nice. So that way you don't run into like mismatches of which, you know, which device is playing where. So as you saw, when the KO2 was controlling the OPZ, it slowed down the OPZ's um, playback rate when the uh, when I was using those time-based effects on the KO2. However, when the OPZ is sending a clock to the KO2, um, these time-based effects, I just learned this today, are actually a little cooler because, uh, yes, it only slows down or stops the KO2, but then it catches right back up to where the song's at. Let me show you. So it, you can tell that it went right to exactly where it was supposed to be. So it's keeping up, and I find that to be pretty cool. Actually, here, let me just show you again. Oh, I guess it's still keeping track no matter what. It's just changing the pitch there. Huh. But you could hear on that um, time-based effect that uh, it was slowing it down a bit. So hopefully that gives you a very, very basic idea of how to get these two working and to troubleshoot any sort of issues you might have with syncing. Uh, Next video, I'll probably talk about sending MIDI notes and tracks and kind of more conceptual things like that that I've been playing around with a lot on my own. And then in the future, I want to talk about, uh, at least right now, the KO2 is able to record and pass along uh, CCs. It's able to do that for program changes, pitch bend, aftertouch. I've tested a lot, and I'm very impressed with what the KO2 can do because the guide really doesn't let you know. Um, so I'll be talking about all that in the future. Until then, please let me know if you have any questions, and I hope that you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.